Moving on now, at least 13 people have been killed in violence between rival Ethiopian communities near the southern town of Mayale. Since the beginning of the month, there have been sporadic clashes over land. People from Borana, a Romo ethnic group, complained that a referendum conducted in 2005 unfairly awarded what they consider to be their land to a Somali clan known as Gary. Both the cattle herding communities and many herders carry guns. Local media says ending the ethnic clashes in different parts of Ethiopia is the greatest challenge facing the reformist Prime Minister Abiy Hakmid. To politics now, citizens in the Democratic Republic of Congo are preparing to go to the polls come December 23rd amid security and health Ebola crisis. This election could mark the country's first democratic transfer of power following decades marked by authoritarian rule, coups and deadly conflict. There are three prominent candidates vying for the presidential post. This includes Emmanuel Ramazani Shadri, President Joseph Kabila's preferred successor, Felix Shizakedi, the president of Congo's largest opposition party, Union for Democracy and Social Progress, and Marty Fayulu, a businessman who is the unanimous candidate chosen by several other opposition parties. Here's a report on all three candidates and the manifesto. Kabila's preferred successor, Emmanuel Ramazani Shadari, is expected to face a credible election from two opposition leaders, Felix Shesikedi, the president of Congo's largest opposition party, and Martin Fayulu, a former Exxon Mobil manager and businessman. The 58-year-old former governor of the eastern province of Manaima served as interior minister from late 2016 until this February when he was named permanent secretary of Kabila's PPRD party. In May 2017, the EU slapped a travel ban and asset freeze on him for his involvement in planning, directing, or committing acts that constitute human rights violations. A Shadari victory could lead to a continuation of Kabila's policies. Fifty-five-year-old Felix Shisekedi is the president of Congo's largest opposition party, the Union for Democracy and Social Progress. He draws much of his political legitimacy from being the son of late veteran opposition leader Etienne Shisekedi, who died in Brussels last year. He says that if elected president, he would make security his priority and spend the first months of his presidency in the troubled east of the country. He said he would select a leader of the UNC, the Union for the Congolese Nation. Martin Fayulu spent almost two decades at ExxonMobil. He currently trails Shidari and Shishikidi in the presidential polls. He is the president of the Engagement for Citizenship and Development Party. The 61-year-old was chosen as opposition candidate after three days of intense talks in Geneva. He promises to revise both mining and oil contracts if elected president. During the campaign, for Yulu, who accepted the use of the controversial voting machines to register people's votes, but which he describes as a cheating machine, has urged voters to go to the polling stations but to vote manually. The introduction of the untested tablet-like voting machines for the election has been widely opposed by opposition candidates competing against Shadari. However, the head of the Electoral Commission, the CENI, say the machines were easy to use and simplified the counting of votes. In all, 21 presidential candidates will be running, including several other prominent Kabila critics, which risks diluting the opposition vote and boosting Shidari's chances. Electoral violence last week and chaotic preparations have raised fears of a repeat of the trouble that marred the 2006 and 2011 polls. Western governments and investors regard the election as crucial towards ending political instability that is impeding investment in Congo. Dozens of EU and African heads of state and government are gathered in Vienna for a summit aimed at boosting economic ties between both continents. Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz jointly hosts the EU-Africa summit with Rwandan President Paul Kagame. The Vice President of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, lauded the importance of the meeting with a theme taking cooperation to the digital age. Migration is not on the official agenda of the summit, but it is expected to be discussed on the sidelines as Austria is trying to revive the EU campaign for North African countries to take in more Mediterranean Sea migrants. This meeting is important, desirable, and timely, and Nigeria welcomes the theme, Taking Cooperation to the Digital Age. 
Given rapid game-changing developments in technology, Africa and Europe must work together to advance and harvest the economic benefits of the digital economy and at the same time prevent a counterproductive widening of the digital gap in Africa. We are of course keen to work together to boost the job creation potentials of new technologies rather than concentrating solely on jobs destined to disappear in the digital age. Faster growth, sustainable development and job creation are also vital for reducing irregular migration from Africa to Europe. In our globalized world, people can see disparities in standards of living across regions quite easily for those who would otherwise embark on risky, dangerous journeys in search of opportunity. In Nigeria, we're taking urgent and practical steps to provide such opportunities for our rapidly increasing youth population. Our advisory group on technology and creativity has been working to build an ecosystem for funding, training, infrastructure, and intellectual property protection. Under our social investment program, 75,000 young people are being trained in coding, software development, hardware maintenance, animation, and data management, and we're set to train another 200,000 young men and women. Still to come on the program. Refugees living in Uganda begin preparations in shopping at the annual refugee Christmas market. Please stay with us.